almost had done the dressage climb. And he's been on. trained, right? He's been trained to do the changes already, right? Well, he's been trained half mm -hmm. okay. by hunting jumper and dressage, right? Okay. Because we always have the trouble with him getting to go forward. Yeah. And so is he ready? Isn't he ready? Yeah. Or he needs it for doing a hunt around, you know, like that. So he's looking very happy and I'm, I'm really appreciating the energy that he's bringing to the work today, too. He feels very happy, yeah. and, and I think he really likes going to different places yeah. and working in different places. Yeah. He gets bored easy. So. And that's the problem. The Veltmeyers are intelligent to the point that it's a liability. <laughs> okay, let's pick up those reins. They're intelligent like people in a kind of spooky way. Almost too much brain. And they get bored and they start, like you said, start coming up with ways of toying with you. Okay. When you're ready, a transition to counter, you're gonna come across the diagonal and I just wanna take a look at a few canter walk, canter transitions. Just on a diagonal and very casually. Again, this is a really difficult exercise I'm throwing at you. Collect, 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 and you're gonna walk. He's thinking change, right? We're gonna walk, and he's gonna walk on the bit, collected and light and soft, and then you're gonna canter left lead. Okay, so we need to get way more collection before your walk okay. and in your walk. So diagonal. And really collected canter, sit back and walk and really collect it, walk, tap them a little bit, look at your diagonal line, don't drift from it, hold your line Judy, look at, you look at your letter and hold in between your legs and canter. Good, good job keeping that straightness. Now remember, really short and really uphill, super, super, don't let him curl, good. No. Up a hill. Those don't let that teeter totter start to curl on you. Good. Remember those quick, short, little half halt bumps. Don't carry him with your hands. Yeah. Tip the teeter totter down. Get his nose up. Think about your walk. Ears up in the rafters. Yes. And tip tip that teeter totter down. Tip it down. Put those half halts through. Don't, yeah, that's it, but light hand, light hand. Good, and counter. So you can use a strong aid, Judy, but get off of it quickly. Do you know what okay. I mean? Yeah. That was excellent. Way better balance. Do that again. This time we're going to do two of those on this diagonal. Under, 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 tip them under and walk on the hind leg with his ears in the rafters. Yeah? Fine. That was okay. So we did it too much. That's okay. Canter. And do it again. Good, and now walk. Tip them down and under. Ears up in the rafters and canter on the left lead. Ha ha ha, never mind. It's okay. Good, up, ears in the rafters. Judy, ears in the rafters. Yes, it's okay. It's okay. He's got to learn that you can balance him up, that you're not going to go down with him. Ears in the rafters. Uphill. Good, good. Hands light. Good, sit up tall and try to walk. Collect, collect, collect. Better, light hand. And canter, your reins got a little long there. I, it was too much give away, right? Okay. Yeah, it, when I say give with your hands, I mean briefly, momentarily, but don't make your reins get longer, okay? Collect, collect, collect. Do a tiny circle once you get past Paul, so don't run him over. Tiny circle, that canter's looking good, Judy. Half out, don't let him bury himself. And now you're going to walk right there and walk. Better. And canter right lead. Uh huh. Tiny circle right. Tiny circle up a hill. Short ears up. Think of your counter pirouette. Oh, <laughs> he's tripped there. Up hill. Think about your walk. Think about your walk. Don't let him bury himself under under teeter totter, and walk. And light. Good for you, Judy. Yes, exactly. Piaf lives there. Absolutely. Leave him up there. I love it. That's where I want his neck. Right there. Keep your hands soft though. 
and don't carry them up there. Just put your hands down, but think that's where I want them. That's a beautiful outline, canter. See if you can keep them balanced there, Judy. Balancing this horse is more than half the battle because he's so big. Collect, collect, collect. Tiny circle right, uphill, ears in the rafters. Half out light, half out light. Think about your walk, upper body back, little half faults. Sit back and walk. Half out light, good. Tap that hind leg under, little half out, think piaf. Half out light, half out light, half out light, and canter. Super walk, feel the collection, ooh la la. And now raise a little shorter, hands further forward. Good, diagonal. Good. Dead straight, up a hill, and a single flying change right there. Bingo. Go for it. Hold the line. Uh huh. That's that Johnny Cash song. I walk the line. You got to walk your line, Judy. So sit down, and I want this horse to go, hmm, I don't know if I'm in a volte or walk or do a flying change. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Sit down, sit back, and switch your legs. Half alt, switch your legs. And collect, and volte. Think about your teeter-totter. Ride up your up escalator. Exactly, ride up your up escalator. Rain short, up your up escalator. Good for you, Judy. Try to shorten your reins quickly. Get his ears up. Get those knees climbing up your up escalator. Diagonal, organize. Half up on the, when you're ready, a single flying change. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and F. Good for you. Right up your up escalator. That's okay. You've got Jen. Watch out for Jen. Don't glue yourself on the rail there. Good. Now short diagonal, Judy. So to B, look at B. Keep them collected right up the up escalator. Ears up, balanced, half hold on the outside range, switch your legs, change. Volte, small circle, tiny circle, tiny, up a hill, up a hill, fabulous. Back towards me, diagonal to me, diagonal to me, up the up escalator, collect it. Oh, it's okay, so turn left. It's all right, this is tiring. You guys are doing great. So you're gonna go back to B and canter on a line from B to H and do a flying change from B to H, provided that his canter is good. So just circle. It's okay. Yeah, you want to be on the left lead. Just relax for a moment. Make sure that the difficulty of this exercise is not putting a lot of tension into your body. Because you both, this is very, I'm having you do very advanced exercises and you're thriving. And you just have to make sure that you don't little by little get yourself wound into this tight little ball. It's the timing though, it's like the leg, the hog pole, the, you know, keeping the right like, vein. Okay, so here's, so here's the deal, it's like dancing. Have you ever danced? Like waltz or anything like that? I will if, do. If you find <laughs> the rhythm, it's all good, okay? So everything has to be in the rhythm of his counter. So you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? And he, he has a fairly rhythmic, easy canter, so it should be easy for you to fall into his rhythm. Right. Now, so you're gonna, for a flying change, you're gonna go push, half fault, straighten, ass. Okay. So before you ask for a single flying change, there's gonna be three steps of preparation before. Okay. Push, half fault, straighten, ask, okay. push, Half alt, straighten now. Push half alt, and if you keep doing that, you'll do four tempies. Okay. Now on the push, you're asking to close both hind legs. That both hind legs are going to move actively underneath you. The half alt, you're going to say, but don't accelerate and fall on the forehand. The straightening is saying, now we've got to get all your bones in a row because if anything is out of alignment, it's going to block the change. And then the aid to the ask is in the moment that the outside hind leg is on the ground, so it's the first step of canter, yeah. and you put your aids in the new lead as if you're asking for a walk canter on the new lead. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, you're, so you go push, half off, straighten, walk canter on the new lead. Okay. All right? And you want to keep the horse straight 
as straight as you would have him for your walk counter transition. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Um, Always. When I was going from left to right lead and I asked for the change and he bulged so bad with right, was that because my body was way out of line? Well, it could have been, if even so much as looking down, I can't remember exactly that moment. I remember he spooked one time, and one time, just basically, the horse has to be channeled between your aids. Okay. So anywhere that he's not in the tunnel of your aids is yeah. not going to work. The flying changes in dressage are very much like a sniper. You have to have the, the kind of target shooting ability of a highly skilled marksman the horse's body is the muzzle of your rifle, yeah. and it has to be pointed dead steady at your target, which is the end of your line, wherever your line is. Okay. And the aid for the flying change is the trigger that you pull, and the change itself is the bullet down the muzzle of the gun. Okay. And the horse has to be that straight. If the muzzle of your sniper rifle is bent, it will block the bullet, and if you don't hold your body perfectly still, you'll cause the gun to swing around and you'll be off your target. Okay. Now, I I do too. I tell you, it really works for me too. It's a certain psychological thing. I got it. She likes the sniper better than dancing. How about a dancing sniper? Too much multitasking for me, but I'll give it a go. Yeah, little by little. Okay, so again, I mean, even as a sniper, rhythm is critical, right? Because they have to time their shooting with their breath. So you want to, in your, and, and this is going to, this is probably seems very elaborate, but when you're doing tempi changes, it's critical. For single changes, it's not such a big deal. Yeah, yeah. But I like to introduce the riders to learn their single changes so that they're simple building blocks to the tempis. Yeah. So that it all is very coherent, one to the next. Yeah. So with that in mind, let's try them again. And let's just see. Now remember, if he is diving on the forehand, curling, losing his balance, it's not going to work. It doesn't matter how good a sniper you are. <laughs> so you've got to make sure that the... Sure, the barrel of the gun is angled up because you have to compensate a little bit for the fact that gravity is going to take you down. Yeah, do you want? Yeah, you, if your half halts are too slow, he will um, bury himself in your hand. Right. So you have to bump him back and then be very quick to release and ask him to have self-carriage. Okay. And the other thing is if your, rain start, if your hands start to climb up to try to keep him up, yeah. he'll curl down on that too. Okay. That will act as a sling for him to lean on. So you've got to be very, very quick and excellent timing. And remember that the rain aids for the half hold is only, it's less than half of the equation. You know, it's the leg and the seat and the back and the way you tuck your pelvis and the way you bundle him behind and you and I both know this horse bundles like crazy so you'll actually have to be careful because you might hit a button where all of a sudden he sits down okay thanks. you know thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're bundling him and half halting him just be careful because you could hit at that point in which he he over collects and over sits and over engages behind yeah Okay. So you have to be, say, a little bit, only a little bit, only a little bit, only a little bit. So instead of half halts, think quarter halts. Like, okay. take your aids and half your aids until you find the effective amount. It's like good French cooking. You know, there's a lot of tasting involved. Keep tasting, keep feeling, keep seeing. Okay, we can always add more. But once we've done too much, we can't take away. You can always add a little more this and that to your half halt. But... If you come with one too strong and he sits down and he can't go forward, then it, you lost your moment. Okay, so when you're ready, same thing again. And you want him to feel on those diagonal lines or short diagonals 
that he may do a volte, he may do a walk. He doesn't know. In other words, Judy, I want him not to know what's going to happen. Pardon? Yeah, essentially you ask yourself while you're on that diagonal, could I do a volte? And if the answer is no, you do a volte. And you say, could I walk right now? If the answer is no, you must walk. Could I do a flying change right now? Mm, I think so. I'll do it. So you ride with that kind of mindset. Okay. And is this walk good or is it too hurried? It's a little this. That's what it feels like it to me. It could come through the back more. It could come through the back. So remember you want the walk to be congruent with all of the other paces. So the roundness and throughness and fluidness of your trot and canter that you're looking for should permeate through your walk. Remember, the German for throughness is Durchlässigkeit, which means permeability. So if so, make sure that the aids permeate through his body. So if he if you do a, a rain aid, you feel it permeate through his body. If you apply a leg aid, it permeates through his body. Okay. If he's walking like this. His back is probably a bit tight, and those yeah. aids don't have the permea, that, that even diffusion through his body. Does that make sense? Okay, because sometimes I am to make it more complicated than it needs to be. So I feel like this map is better. Okay, but he's not quite as collected. So it's better because it's freer for you, yeah. but now, and it's lower. So yes, it's going through his back more. But we want the collected walk to go through his back, so you just avoided okay. the issue there. Okay. So collect the walk and, and put him on the bit. And if he starts bobbing and nodding his head and all that kind of stuff, say, hmm, I think I need to look at my walk pirouettes. I think I might take a look at what's happening with this walk and I might need to do a little more with it. Yeah, and put a little more bend into his body and push his hips a little more left. In other words, more needs to happen for him. Good, and remember to get soft on that left rein. Good for you, you're gonna be a natural with those counter pirouettes. Holy moly. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Yummy. Uh, 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 what, uh, 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 mm, where are we going? Yeah. You can go out of the walk pirouette, just don't lose the throughness. Keep them, yeah, now soft arms. There, feel the throughness you've got there? Yeah. Don't lose it. Take your time. Whoa. There. Okay, half fault. Through. Yes. And then light. Make sure that that the a half fault doesn't become prolonged and then it's not a half fault anymore. Okay, then it's a pull. And then he'll lean. And then your teeter-totter will drop down. You wanna keep the front end of your teeter-totter light as a feather and springy up in front of you. And all of the ballast is back on the back end of that teeter-totter. So light and springy up in front of you. And then when you're ready, Big inhale and a nice upward transition to counter. But that walk, keep your legs on. Exactly, he walks through his back. Good for you. Feel how quickly you can regroup that. And now, and, and now an adva a trained horse would be walking in a shoulder for right before cantering. He's so sexily uphill though, I have to say, Judy. <laughs> well done. Those withers are up in front of the group. I love it. Super. Reins nice and short, hands in in front of you. Little half faults, just like the walk. Yeah. Little half faults. Little half faults. Less is more. Turning, pointing, find your line of travel. Collected, short, uphill. Collected, little half faults, organized. Now remember, push, half fault, straighten. Yeah, good. I love it. Nice. You get him going. Get the boogie going. Come on, no putting it in park. Don't let him turn into a, a marble statue. He's got those feet, he's got to move. And do a flying change right there. Sit up tall, push, half up straight mass. Good, good, right through it, right through it. Okay, so you actually did a couple changes there on that one. Pat him, diagonal or short diagonal as the case may be. How is he? Can, how does everything feel? What do you want to do? Good, how does he feel? Good, I like it, it's coming. Good for you, Judy. Keep that balance, it's very good. Uh, watch him, don't let him start to pull down there. 
I don't want to see the inexorable slide down. He needs to be up in light. And he's got to be asking you, what, what do you want? Do you want me to circle? Do you want me to walk? Yeah, and walking through his back. Remember? Ho, 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 and counter. Good. Now that he learned something of value. Beautiful. There's your trained dressage horse. Reins short, up a hill. Organized. Ear tips up. Think of his ear tips up by your shoulders. You've got all this horse up in front of you. Super. Push, half out, straighten, ass. Okay, fine. Do you feel how you take your bum out of the saddle? Yeah. That's a reward for him. Okay, you don't want to do that. Okay. Not any value there. Unless you're trying to save your crotch. Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Try a circle there just for fun. Small circle there. Don't let him careen down. Uphill. You see, those small circles take more energy. And he, he looks at a small circle and he goes, oh, I can just careen down into a small circle. He needs to hitch up his britches and dig in and uh, apply effort for a small circle. Both of you do. Okay? You both need to, when you have a small circle coming, you guys both have to dig down deep. You don't go, ugh. He has to go, ugh, okay, I'm gonna try. It's like all of a sudden having to do a bunch of squats, okay? Okay, and now 10 squats around a small circle. Come on. Yeah, no diving down, come on. And this is a little bit of him saying, okay, I've done a lot, right? And so he, we're gonna end on a good note. We know that he's done a lot, he's been amazing. And he doesn't decide when he's done. We, good boy. He just has to do one more nice change the other way. Very good. But like I said, you only get to do changes as a reward. Yeah, keep at it, keep at it. Yeah, just keep pestering him. Exactly, you're gonna make it highly undesirable to choose that path. Exactly, it's not gonna be a battle, it's just not desirable. Stay with it, keep going. And I don't let your bum come out of that saddle. Exactly, keep going. Just so that it's not fun to not to do that. It's not fun. It's like he's going to go, oh, it's actually kind of not rewarding. Keep at him until you get a nice canter. Good. Keep at him. Keep at him. You got to be a little quicker. He gets, you be like react sooner to him. He, he kind of is, it has satisfaction in being quicker than you. So be quicker than him. Get ahead of him. Ex expect that he's going to do that, Judy. And be ready for it, is what I'm trying to say. Diagonal. Ears up. Yeah, nice canter. Ears up. And a single blind change. Go for it. Good. Go for it. Sit up tall. Put your bum in the saddle. Good. Keep him active. Down the next long side. Shoulder in. Super. His frame is good. Keep your bum in the saddle. Tailbone down. Ears up. Quick and light. Quick and light. Quick and light. How's the left rein? Give it. How's the right rein? Light, super. Transition to trot, good catch. Transition to trot, transition trot, and going. Trotting, trotting, rising trot. Really go now, tap, tap, tap. Good. Really fire him up, work on his lengthening strides and trot now. You're saying you are not done until I say you're done, my sweetheart. Go, 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 go. Make those hind legs go at double time now. Everything is warmed up. He has no excuses. Good. Keep your hands soft. Yes. Find that trot. Yes. Come on. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, good for you. Remember to stay soft with your arms without throwing him away. Diagonal. Good for you. Keep that fire. Keep that fire in your belly. Yep, make him work. That's okay, I know he's not totally even there. Just ignore it and keep him going. Eventually he'll get really even behind. It's just, that's where he's at right now with his stage. Good. There Whoa. we go. Super Judy. Super Judy. That's much better than last time I saw him. Okay, and let him stretch down. Super. Good Sorry. riding. <laughs> we're going to say walk. <laughs> yeah, and then pick him up again, and Bravo. now we're going to work on the caterpillar. <laughs> Bravo. Pretty good, eh? Oh.
I haven't seen you. I, I see your putts about and stuff, but that's some real yeah, work. Yeah, <laughs> good work. Yeah. So nor normally when you're on your own, you probably wouldn't want to do that many changes and that many voltages. I think we we kind of did more than uh, we exceeded our allotted amount in his mind. <laughs> Yeah. Weeks. Yeah. But he, it's interesting. I mean, he almost felt lame in those forward trots. Well, he was like a, his back stuck somehow. Well, he just he's a little tired. Yeah. He's a little tired, and he got the hay speedy. This is a little bit. Yeah, I, I know what you mean by saying feels lame. I think he's a little tired, and so he was trying to compensate and use a stronger side. So he just got crooked. Um, and you know, and that's a fine line between him being warmed up and then him starting to get tired. Yeah. So just in your own work, play with his working on the medium pot sometimes earlier. We say that the very end where he was already kind of freaked out. Yeah. And so it would be like going to the gym and working out and then the very end doing He's an rubbing exercise his... where you can really feel you're not symmetrical. Like that. 